Good evening or good morning, depending on where you're based. Um, all of us presenting today is from, uh, from Europe, so it's good evening from us. Today we are going to show you uh, a presentation of our new product, Naviet Zero. The presenters will be the two, if you could tell a bit about yourself. Absolutely, thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar. My name is Batul Jabot and I'm the Product Manager for Sustainability and Environmental Design at Symmetry Technology. Over to you, Jan Tori. Thank you, Batul. My name is Jan Tori Bugge. I am the Head of Product when it comes to the Naviet portfolio, different platforms. And we're going to talk about Drevi today. Try to lead uh, the development, making sure that you do revive things uh, based on the input from you out there. So that's my role in here. Over to you, Nikolai. Thank you. And my name is Nikolai Kavan. I'm just has been assigned to a new role as a lead technology analyst uh, within Symmetry Tech. But for the past one year and a, and a half, I think, uh, I've been working with the Navigate Shiro product and sustainability. But now handing that over to Batum. In today's presentation, I'm going kind of uh, around the different topics um, related to Navigate Shiro. And at the end, we will have a Q&A session. Asymmetry, our core mission is crystal clear. It's the decarbonization. And there's a good reason for our mission. I think most of you can probably agree that we have a lot of challenges that we need to attend to, um, like the rising global temperatures, extreme weather, um, rising sea levels, and increasing flooding. Um, which all affect uh, all of us. Let's zoom a bit into the construction industry, industry um, a sector which significantly uh, impact the environment. We contribute to greenhouse gas emissions, resource consumption and waste generation on a global scale. We think it's essential to consider whole life for carbon emissions and to act accordingly to address the 11% of embodied carbon emissions in the constructions. So in the next part, I'm going to talk a bit about how we think that we can help you to towards this net zero carbon neutral future. But first of all, I would like to make sure that we have a common grounds um, when it comes to life cycle assessment. So life cycle assessments or LCA is a systematic methodology used to evaluate the environmental impact uh, of a product, service or process. The life cycle typically includes the raw material extraction, manufacturing, distribution of the materials and products and the use without the, the um, lifespan of the building, ending up in disposal and recycling at the end. Usually these different stages are put into different more measurable areas. Most of them are following international standards like the ICU 14,000 series. And we have another ISO standard 21, 930, which is covering the, the EPDs or the environmental product declarations. Navier Chiro is designed for designers and powered by one click LCA and all the resources that we can get from, from one click. And we are focusing essentially on the A1 to A3 model, where one click LCA is covering the full life cycle assessment. Uh, including certifications and calculation methods that we have not implemented in site revit using Navi Zero. Our goal is to make it easy for designers to meet these standards within Navi Zero and to make sure that we can communicate this um, throughout the um, value chain. By considering the sustainability factors from the outset of the project, we can shape buildings and products would reduce carbon footprint. As all of you probably have seen this used in other concerns of BIM, we all know that doing changes in the early stages is much easier, much cheaper, uh, and we have more, much more influence than on the later stages. 
there's a lot of advantages of the early life cycle assessment. Um, it could be role in reducing environmental impact, the opportunities for financial efficiency, supply chain resilience. Uh, resilience. We can showcase commitment to sustainability practices um, and make sure that we can minimize waste and optimize materials. So in the next part, I will go more into an introduction of the actual product that is zero. First of all, I would like to mention the um, who is actually going to using this kind of tool. And for that, we have been focusing on the architectural design, interior design, and structural engineering. And MVP will be coming later on as well. Uh, this tool is designed to bridge the gap between those who design in Revit and the sustainability experts conducting the life cycle assessments. Some of the reasons for choosing a software like Navier Zero is to make <clears throat> much more um, sustainable material selections within the Revit models. Um, we want to optimize the or give you tools to optimize the building carbon in your designs in the early stage by giving insight. There will be an, an option to visualize and document this within the Revit files as well um, as you work on the file. And last but not least, we want to make sure that this can be seamlessly communicated uh, in the design intent in the Revit file and also to other stakeholders using the Revit files or working in the one-click LCA. So some of the main features and benefits. First thing is the project location that you need to start uh, adding. And this is to make sure that you have accurate uh, and context and region, regional data incorporated in your files. Within here, you can also streamline the design process by defining which Revit categories to work with. So in that sense, you can narrow down the uh, focus of the model. To ensure consistency and thereby reducing the time when assigning resources, you can also define the default unit for the resources or the elements to use. And at the end, you also have a way to define the project phases that you want to focus on. On the element selection part, we use the tool Apply Resources. And on the left side, we will have a way to work with all the elements within the model. So to, campaign, <clears throat> to gain a comprehensive overview, we will list up all elements in your model and provide a a bird eye view of your work. But you also have the way, uh, different ways to pinpoint any required uh, elements for, um, yeah, for attention. The filtering part could be used to uh, refine your project view. And we have different filters for Revit families, categories, naming. And for instance, if you are going to work in the early stages or in templates, you also have an option so that you can see everything that have been loaded into the file and not only the things that are in the current model. You can also scope out the different elements, uh, making your work more efficient. Um, if you want to look at what data, uh, which elements are missing data. For a more streamlined or categorized view of your project, you also have the option to group everything by material. In that way, it's very easy to get an overview of the different materials used in the, in the model and 
resources, sorry, um, elements that are sharing the same Revit material can easily share the same resources as well. The selective display feature focuses on the current, what currently matters. So in this case, you can isolate and exam um, individual elements by selecting them in the viewport. And when they have been selected, you can also decide if you're going to add the resources directly to the type, or you want to add this information to the different users used in the element. One of our focuses have been to work with the resources and help you filter out the resources that is needed for this specific project. The first part is for data sources. Um, since we have a lot of resources available through one click LCA, uh, it's very important to know what you want to work with. Um, this can be from different local standards. It could be from um, the EPD providers throughout the world. And you can select multiple of, of these to narrow down your filtering. You can also select a specific area for the filtering. So in this case, we could select a couple of Nordic countries to make sure that all the resources are from within that area. All resources are divided into different resource categories. Those can be searched in, you can filter them. Um, and we also have an automatic mapping between Revit categories and these resource categories. Again, to make it easier to uh, filter out the uh, resources needed. Resources are divided into different types, which is the manufacturing and the plant ones and generic ones. There's also a grouping of the resources into the um, how they are ranking related to the embodied CO2. And you can also do a further filtering based on the area, uh, sorry, the uh, units, or you can do it by the name. When you have found a resource, you can always look at the details and get some more information. And then when you found the right one, you can add it to the element in the file. You can also use the resource ID from the uh, EPD provider. So if you have probably have downloaded the uh, resource uh, EPD from the manufacturer, you can use that ID to identify it. And as you can see here, we can apply the resources to multiple elements at the same time. And if the resource doesn't support the unit that is selected, we will show that in the interface as well. If you copy the resource from one element to another, we will make sure that it's using the same um, unit as the one that it is copied from. One of the most important thing for us to make sure is that it's very easy for you to compare the different resources. So first of all, we uh, in this case, I'm just going to, to filter out a few elements. Um, I know which category I want to work with. Um, and in this case, I'm looking for some red bricks. So when I do an EDC search on this, it will narrow down the, um, the amount of resources available. And of course, I could use the details to view all of these information and try to compare those. But we have also implemented a actual compare functionality where you can select between one and, sorry, between two and five resources and trigger the com compare dialog box. The compare tool will list the resources from left to right with the one with the lowest embodied carbon on your left. Um, 
And we're trying to do this based on the embodied carbon on the um, yeah on the different uh, units that are selected. You can also define which properties you would like to look at and have a more focused on the ones. From the, within this dialog, you can also pin resources that you would like to have on top of the list for future use, and you can, of course, apply it to the element that have been selected. When you have selected all the elements um, and the resources uh, that you want to look to, into, you can do a calculation of the embodied carbon uh, on those. The first thing that you will see is a uh, visual highlighting. Um, we will have a list of revit categories, which is the most, um, yeah, with the, the largest um, consummation of um, embodied carbon. And by selecting either in the pie chart or the list itself, high objects will be highlighted in the model. You can also do this by resource categories. So that will be the categories that the resources are divided into to get another kind of view on which kind of materials are actually the most contributing ones. Um, with the detail view, you will see the a more detailed calculation, and you can also get access to the uh, details on the individual resources that are selected and used in the calculation. And the same works for the Revit categories as well. Besides having this calculation, we're also adding a schedule to the Revit file. The schedule is using regular Revit parameters. And within here, you will have a view of all the types that are used in the calculation. And since this is regular Revit parameters, if you go to the edit types uh, in the properties pattern, you will also see the additional information. If some of the elements that have been selected are using more than one resource, we will list them up uh, as well. And since this is regular Revit parameters, you can create your own schedules uh, and do export as you like. Moving over to the last tool in Navier Zero is the export to one click LCA. This tool is fairly simple to use within Revit. Uh, when you have done the mapping, you can just click the one click tool uh, and then everything is exported and you will be directed to the one click website. It requires you to have a profile uh, account at one click. It doesn't require a license, but you need to have the account which is free for you to have. From here, you can download an Excel sheet with all the information that you have exported. And if you don't have a license for one click, but need to submit this information to someone else working on the project, you can send this directly and they can start the import process. In this case where I have a license for one click, I can select the project and start the process. And what we will see here is that when we go into the actual import, most of all these resources are mapped and the mapping you can see here is the mapping basis is that they are mapped within the model. This makes it very easy for people that need to work with this information that they don't need to do the import themselves. Uh, you can have prepared everything using Navier Zero and then you can continue into one click LC. So to summarize this, uh, I think the next slide is quite important to, to understand regarding Navier Zero and one click. So Navier Zero is empowering everyday designers with the tools for informed decision making uh, within Revit, where the one click LCA tool is used for 
are probably the um, sustainability professionals that are going to do the life cycle assessment um, and would need to have all the different standards and uh, certifications available as well. And just to list up a few of the, um, I think, important differences between these two different tools. Uh, one of them is that it's not necessary for you to have a license for one click LCA to use Naviate Zero. That is a part of the license for Naviate Zero to get access to all the resources from one click. And also, um, the one, the, um, Navi Zero tool is saving some of the data, but uh, in the Revit file, so that you can communicate that with the rest of the team or any other stakeholders. But you will still need the Navi Zero tool to um, update the different calculations that are done. So to recap, what I've shown is that we have functionality for mapping. Um, all the different materials. Uh, you can speed up um, the uh, identification of the different resources needed. Uh, you have an option to compare different resources side by side directly inside Revit. Uh, you can visualize this in Revit um, and do optimization based on that. And we have an option to export all of this information to Revit or from Revit to uh, one click, or you can use um, other tools for, for doing auricular uh, exports, uh, for instance, using um, Navigate Accelerate to use the schedules and get this in and out from Excel. If you do have uh, some good ideas or some feedback for us on this product, uh, things that you would like to see in it in the future, we have something called the ideation portal. Uh, it will be, uh, the link for it will be put in the chat as well. Um, so you have easy access to communicate with us, uh, both of different uh, feature implementations that we are looking to do. And uh, we have also launched a website for Naviate Zero where you can find different information. Uh, you can also do a sign up for a 30 days trial of Navier Zero. That one will include all the resources available for the region that you are working with the project. Um, but it will be a form that you need to fill in and then we will get you started. And just to make sure that everybody knows that we have a lot of different industry drivers, but the most important one is you because you are the people that are working with, within the design and have the opportunities to um, actually change uh, in the early stages. And with that, I think we are ready for some questions if we do have any. So far, I cannot see any questions, but um, within the uh, within the chat, um, the attendees can actually um, navigate towards it and pick up the links for what you've just mentioned there, Nikolai. So um, we have the ideas page and where they can download the trial from as well, um, already within that available for them. There are some questions popping in, in the question pane now, I can see. So uh, you can take it one by one here. The first one, can you confirm that you can export the data to a CSV or Excel file without the need to go via one-click LCA? And I think you showed that. Uh, in the last part, yeah, from the, from the one click page, you can all website you can always download this uh, information. But since this is Revit data, then you can just save that into a CSV file and do an export of the uh, the schedule as usual. So no change in, in that process. Good. Uh, yeah. Next one popping in is how does it work if you have existing building structure? Not sure if that needs some more clarification, but yeah, I, I think so. Um, as far as I know, there isn't usually any requirements on the existing existing building structures to document those. Um, 
And I think if it's for refurbishing or reuse of the materials, that will be more into the life cycle assessment. So that will be mm. in a tool like one click that you will do that. Of course, we can get the the quantities. So you have an overview of that. Yeah. And you could choose to um, only work with the existing constru constructions and export those separately. Mm. Makes sense. We are, makes sense. Uh, we are going a little bit more into the refurbishment part rather than in, in the early design stage. But yeah, we have been thinking about that as well. I think I see another question uh, around the pie chart. Uh, can I adapt the output graphics results to be adapted to a company graphics uh, when it comes to coloring, I guess? Uh, not in, in this first version. Um, this is something that we're looking into um, to have a way of a document in this. Some of the early meetings we have had with customers already uh, imply that it would be nice to have a way of document this as well and do it in a kind of, um, yeah, to have a bit more control on that. So we are looking into how we can document it in the model as well with color schemes and so on. But in the first version, no. Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, as the resources are regional, is the carbon cost of transportation included in any calculation in the first version? That that would be a part of a a four of a five yeah, a four, and the installation would be a five, which is not covered by one on um, in the VH zero. It could be something that we could look into, uh, but we will not move beyond the A schemas um, because then it becomes too much of a uh, um, project specific thing to look into. And then we need to design, kind of look into the different tools and that part is covered by one click LCA. Right. Uh... See the questions are popping in there. That's good. Really good to see some engagement here. Um, let me see. Um, I assume since you demonstrated exporting into one click uh, that Navit doesn't have its own LSA functionality. And um, that's right, I guess, to say. Um, so the, the most important part with the Navit Zero product as such is that it's a powered by one click LSA. So we, it's a partnership between Symmetry and one click LSA. To, to work with the life cycle assessment on, on carbon emission. Um, yeah, can the tool provide a graph of kilos uh, of CO2 square meters? No, not as it is, as it is today. Uh, it's something that we are looking a bit into. It will, of course, complicate it a, a bit since usually when you're working within Revit, it will only be one of the disciplines. And you would like to have this as a, a measurement on the full building, which you will do uh, with several models, but then one click LCA instead. Um, but this, it is something that we look into, especially if you have a target, uh, then we could have something to compare the model. So for the structural model, we might have a tar target of something um, specifically, um, but we don't support the calculation as it is today because we actually don't know the square meters uh, if it's a um, if it's a structural file maybe makes sense uh, and then we have a couple of questions circling around fees and prices on license model so uh, the license model is the same as for other navid applications uh, it's a cloud licensed uh, through symmetry id the login yeah. So the assignment or licenses uh, works as the same for the other ones. Uh, it's a single license model uh, allocated to the users. Um, the fees, um, I think there are an introduction price with a discount uh, throughout 24, uh, but it's set to, I'm gonna talk in euros now, it's set to 765 euros a year, a subscription model. Next one, can you use uh, can you use for refurbishment project or reprofit project or only new build projects? I guess because this is for early design, it's not meant to be used in the refurbishment project as such at the moment. No, of course you could 
um, use the information to have the quantities, but it, again, it relies on the resources that are available. Um, so you, you need to have calculations on that part and not for the new products, which are the ones that are usually uh, available. Um, but you can do that within uh, one TKLC, actually. And now this is a long question. Uh, so, so you need to follow here now. Uh, Rivet has had a problem, uh, problems computing volume and area in the past for some families. For example, walls with multiple layers. What constraints are there to what can be calculated in this adaption? I guess material mapping is connected to volume and area. Yeah, that's right. And unfortunately, we still have some issues on that point. Uh, we're doing all the calculation uh, on the actual materials. And in the next version, we will also apply a functionality to adjust this if there should be any difficulties on maybe modeling the uh, the derivative model to the quantities that you would like to have on it. Um, we're looking more into how we should actually split this into area of the construction, or maybe it would be um, surface areas, like if you have paint. Um, but for now, at least you can adjust this annually by setting the percentage of this. And then in future releases, we will look into the other part. But again, if you have good ideas on how to work with this, please add it to the ideation portal. Um, we would very much like to have a discussion about how we can do this in, in an easy way going forward as well, making sure that these processes are correct. Makes sense. Are the resources based on each separate part of an element, for example, each material layer in a wall, or is the resource a complete composite? You can do both. It depends on the resource that you're using and the element you're using. And on the elements part uh, within Revit, you can do it on the fly. So you can either select to put the resource directly on the family type, uh, so the element, or you could use the different materials within the, the layering. Um, this also includes materials in the low table families. We just need to have a material to, to hook it onto. Mm. But you can also work with um, assemblies or constructions. Uh, there's a lot of those already in the uh, platform from one click. So you do have that. And some of the um, the standards do also have uh, construction that have been implemented. So, um, and you can always do this as a mix as well within mm -hmm. the model. Makes sense. Um, let me see. Uh, where does Navid Zero sit relative for the existing one click query plugin? Uh, is this ultimately going to be replacing it or is it going to be a parallel option? I guess it goes for the carbon designer. Yeah, I think the carbon designer is a bit different because the carbon designer is used to have um, a reference building uh, and to work with very early designs where you actually don't have a model yet. Um, and we're not going to, um, kind of, it will not be instead of doing this. Uh, of course, you could work with masses within the Revit file as well to, to to do a bit the same. Um, we haven't tried that out much uh, yet, uh, but that will definitely be something that we will, will look into as well. Um, but it will be um, together with one click and say uh, that kind of all, yeah, we will do this um, because the rest of the life cycle assessment is not going to be a part of zero. Um, so we, we do the early stages and um, having a tool for the designers to make it uh, kind of the selection a bit easier so that you don't need to be an expert on, on uh, doing um, the full life cycle assessment and know what an EPD and all of that information um, to design it. Yeah, I think we have one last question then. So can the parameters created in Navid Zero be extracted and used used in other customized schedules within Revit? Yeah, all the parameters are regular Revit parameters, so you can reuse everything. The only thing that we don't save is the actual resources. Um, we have the calculations, we have the um, number from the uh, 
um, the publisher, so the name of the EPD the, or the resource um, is added um, also for the different standards, um, like the governmental one for um, Denmark, Sweden, or Norway. Oh, sorry, uh, for Finland. Uh, the numbers from, from the publications there are added into the file. So, you, yeah, those can be used. One thing to be aware of is that the actual calculation of the uh, embedded carbon is done by the tool. So if you do change this to the model, you need to run the tool to do the up, to update that calculation. Uh, but then when it's saved into Revit, everybody can use those uh, resources um, and um, yeah, the calculations in, in the promises. Great, big thank you to Nikolai from from the last question <laughs> from the audience here. Great, uh, a lot of okay. questions. I haven't uh, seen any new questions popping in. Big thank to you, Nikolai, to guide us through Navit Zero. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> small applause. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you, everybody, for listening in. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Bye. Bye. Bye.